G'day girls and boys, today we are looking at the PB002G 40V Max XGT brushless 127mm bandsaw in the US, that'll be the GBP01. If you want a bit more action, a few more videos each month, well then you can check out my Patreon page down in the description. I give away tools on there each month. I've given away one of these and one of these. I'm not sure what will be next, but... If you want to find out, take a look down there. Starts at a few bucks a month and has longer versions of the videos that you see on YouTube with a few outtakes and, yeah, a bit more um, dodgy language, you might say. If that interests you, take a look down in the description. And if you're interested in buying one of these at any point, there'll also be links for that down in the description as well. It is variable speed from 0.8 of a meter per second to 3.2 meters per second or 192 meters per minute. As well as having a variable speed trigger, it also has a dial on the handle which goes from 1 through to 6. So you can set it to run fast or slow depending on what you are cutting. It has a rafter hook. It has a light. It has a steel bar here to stop you crashing into the plastic of the tool once you have finished your cut. All the plastic on the tool, all of this, the cover on the back is all polycarbonate. The handle is polycarbonate. The only thing that's not polycarbonate that I've seen is this area here, which is PA6 with 30% glass. All the standard gunmetal XGT grey parts on here are aluminium. Or if you are in the States, they will be made of aluminium. It has an adjustable guide and the Allen key for those screws is kept over here. Just above your tensioning arm, you will find the Allen key. Let's flip her over. Unlike some portable bandsaws, the blade is completely enclosed all the way around on this particular tool, except for the area where you're cutting, obviously. To open it up, we've got two little green levers here. Pull those down and pop her open. And there she is. You can see it has been used. I have been using this thing, but most of what you see here is wax. We'll get to that in a moment. I'll show you the blade change features later in the video. So what else do I need to tell you right now? How about where it's made? There you go, another XGT tool made in Japan. It's becoming a regular occurrence. You don't need to push down on this tool. It doesn't need a lot of downward pressure. The weight of the tool is enough to cut the material. If you push down too hard, you're just gonna keep jamming it. So what can you do with these things? Well, a regular use for portable bandsaws is cutting uni strut. I'll see if I've got some of that kicking around. If I don't, well, there's plenty of other things I've got around that we can cut just to show you how it all works. But one this size is also great for big cables, large pipes, tubes, anything made of metal really, as well as plastic. You can even chuck a wood blade on here if you want, if you are into cutting wood with a portable bandsaw. Personally, not the sort of thing I would do because I've got plenty of other saws to cut wood. And I don't cut all that much metal, and when I do, I do it with the gold. Good old angle grinder, or better yet, a circular saw that is designed to cut metal. But this will do the job without much mess and without any sparks and relatively quietly compared to an angle grinder or a metal cutting circular saw. Every tool of course has its place, although I do find this quite large and quite heavy. It's a little bit hard to get used to. You know, full disclosure, I don't use portable metal band saws very often at all. I don't have any other ones here to compare this to, I'm afraid. So I'm by no means an expert in band saws. Most of the band saws I use are sitting on the ground. So it's a, it's a fairly hefty beast. They've started off with, you know, what's going to be the biggest one they make, I assume. Uh, they will likely, I'm guessing, make a smaller one, a subcompact sort of one, that may be what the PB001G is, and it just hasn't made it to market yet. Not sure. But most of the LXT ones now are quite small. Let's take a bit of a look at the size difference between the new 40 volt Makita bandsaw and the previous 18 volt models. It's quite cute there, isn't it? Coming up through, a tiny bit bigger, and then woohoo! Look at that one. If we take a look at the old portable Makita bandsaws, we've got three fingers wide on that 18 volt one. We've got four on this one. We've got four on this one, and then what is going on here? Four, oh, and what, another three? We've got seven on the new 40 volt. Looking at the measurements here, they call it a 127 millimeter saw, but I make it 130 from the tip of the blade here to the crash bar, and also 130 from this side of the wall here to your guide, basically giving you that usable cutting depth of about 127. 
I know there is an old LXT one that is basically this size as well. It's not available in this country anymore, so I couldn't get my hands on one of those. It's an old brushed version. I do believe it's still available in some countries. I think it's still available in the States. But if you want a big one in this neck of the woods now, you've got to go XGT. But enough yakking, let's see what this thing can do. Now if you use this cutting wax, it'll help your blade not stick so much as it's going through. This is going to be kind of like cannibalism because I'm going to use the Makita to cut up some Makita stuff. This is an old miter saw support. This is the shoe off a reciprocating saw or sawzall or sabre saw, call it what you will. And this is off a Makita display sign. What speed shall we start at? Well, we'll start low and we'll slowly ramp it up depending on how it feels. Let's ramp it up to speed three. Top speed, speed six. Much quicker on that top speed, obviously. It cuts much nicer, less jumping around. Uh, this is also not a new blade that's on this, it's been used. But let's now have a go at cutting through a shoe. A saw shoe, not a shoe shoe. blade wasn't too happy about cutting that shoe. It um, started off alright but it blunted it pretty quick. It may be because I was on the top speed and this is free to move so when I started the cut it might have been just vibrating a little bit which damaged the teeth. So I'll try the naked blade on this bar and if that's no good I'll swap it out for a new one. Let's go about half speed eh? That's pretty good considering how shitty that blade is. <laughs> it's not in a great condition, but cut that okay. Let's um, ramp it up to six again. Ah, not happy with that. With the blade in its current state, is it able to cut through some stainless tube? This is 0.9 of a millimeter thick, the walls on this thing. This is what it looks like when you cut it with a grinder. Look at this. Look at this. It was actually a drop saw, I think. Abrasive drop saw. So yeah, leaves horrible finish. Changes color. Just awful. Needs a lot of work to tidy that up. On the other end, you can see a cut made by the XGT metal cutting saw here, which is significantly better. There's a slight burr on it. Not a lot. That side's good, that side's good. Just spur on two sides. Pretty smooth. Would only need minor finishing. And when you cut it, it's nice and cold. How good will the cut be with the bandsaw? Especially with that shitty blade on it. I'm gonna try it with the shitty blade first. And then if that's no good, we'll swap to a different blade. We'll try it on about speed two. We wanna go fairly slow through stainless, I reckon, eh? See how she stalled and stuck there? I think it might be time for some more wax. 
Finish wise, much better than the angle grinder. Uh, not particularly hot. Finish wise, not as good as a metal cutting saw, but we are using that rather damaged up blade. Now I haven't been able to find any uni strut kicking around, but how about some mega uni strut? This stuff is pretty hefty. I'm still using that shitty blade. The This thing cuts pretty good considering the teeth are like worn to hardly anything. Anyway, let's see how it goes through this. Okay, speed two. Jam, jam, jam. Let's put some wax on, see if it makes a difference. Right, we are re-waxed. So will it make a difference? wax made a heap of difference. Look at the state of the teeth on this thing, or should I say lack of teeth, I mean it's almost smooth there. Yet I've just done that cut you just saw through this, which is not an unsubstantial piece of steel. So it's a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch? What's a quarter of an inch? It's about 6.35 millimeters, that's what it is. So that is pretty hefty, and it went through it relatively easily, especially considering the blade is in a pretty sorry state. So I'm going to change that blade out now and then we'll do some other cuts. First thing you need to do before you remove your blade is of course to remove your battery. Once your battery is removed you can flick this lever. Whack it all the way around like that. You have now just taken the tension off your blade. If we have a look at the back side as I showed you earlier, fully covered. Flick these two little levers down. You can then open up your back to get to your blade. Then if you don't want to cut your fingers, you can get a pair of gloves, or you can just ping it off like so. Pull it out from between the rollers, and that's how you get it off. Fairly simple. This bottom wheel is pretty solid, and you can't turn it by hand. It'll only turn when the tool is running. Whereas this top one here moves up and down and moves about the place so that you can get the tensioning right on your blade. Speaking of blade, where is our new blade? There it is now. There's your blade size and model number. This is a 10 tooth per inch blade. You can get 14, 18, and 24, I think. Um, they're all for different sorts of things. This one, it says, will go through up to 10 mil plate. Can do stainless, metal. Others are made for plastic, some for wood, um, cast iron, all sorts of different things. So make sure you get the right blade for what you want to cut. Now, before you put your new blade on, you should probably get your blower out and give this thing a bit of a clean. You may need to clean the wax off your bearings and off the rubber on your wheels as well as any filings and stuff that are stuck on there. Once you've done that, you can install your new blade, which incidentally is also made in a pan. Next up, make sure you've got the blade in the right orientation. Rotating that way, that's the way we want it to go. Hopefully I can do this without it blocking the camera too much. So what you need to do, slide it into your runners here. Get it in as hard as you can. The flat side <laughs> on this side, obviously. Then put it around your bottom wheel. Pull it up as tight as you can with your gloves on, of course. Try not to get in the way of your camera and slide the top wheel as far down as it goes. Remember this one goes up and down, so slide it right down so you can get your blade over it. Get it round like so. You may have to just pull and prod in a few places. But there we go. She is in. Make sure though that you keep this fully in at this point. Once you have it all nicely in place, Shut your lid, flick it over, 
retension it with the lever here all the way around until it locks like that in that position it's now tensioned correctly when you first turn it on it might move slightly just getting itself tracking and getting in the right place but she should be ready to go battery on all good there's a screw here for adjusting the tracking of your blade if it's not quite running true wax her up we are now good to go but what are we going to cut? We need to do something to test the capacity of this thing. We've got a huge throat on this. So let's check out what we can cut with it. Okay, before I knacker my blade, there's too many of those spinning as I thought there would be. I was hoping this would hold enough, but it wasn't quite enough. So let's just cut the big pipe, eh? Now uh, we'll go two and a half. There we have it. This has an outer diameter of 115 millimeters and it cuts beautifully. So that was a good demonstration to show you that your material needs to be held securely before you try and cut it. I kept it running because I could see what this one was doing. So as you can see, got a cool pattern on here as the tool was, as the blade was just running along the surface and just winding this out of all of those tubes. So it was just pushing it along running on the teeth and not actually cutting. Now it seemed to cut this pipe fairly good. This is five millimeter wall thickness and 115 millimeter OD. And yeah, I thought it went through nice and quick, nice and smooth. And that's with a 10 tooth blade, remember. With the higher blades, if you get like a 24, you got more than twice as many teeth per lineal inch of this blade. You'll get a far finer cut, far smoother then you get with the 10 tooth blade. The 10 tooth can be a bit aggressive, a little bit tricky to start, might jump around a bit more than the finer blades. So there you have it. Let me know if you're thinking of getting one of these and what it is you're going to use it for. What do you use your bandsaws for at the moment? Let me know down below. But she's pretty hefty with an 8 amp hour battery on it like we have here. It weighs in at 7.8 kgs, which is the same as the HS011G, the 270 millimeter circular saw, which also weighs in with an 8 amp hour battery at 7.8 kgs. So thanks for watching another one of my videos or if this is your first time, cheers for popping in. Please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, all that stuff. I've got a few videos coming up this month that are not Makita tools. There are gonna be Makita videos as well, of course, but I'm gonna pepper in a few other ones just to change it up a bit. Until then, have a good one and I'll see you in a few days time. Cheers, guys.